Chris is in Beijing and is spending the day helping out at one of the city's busiest animal hospitals. How are you going? Hi. I'm for Mary Peng. I am. I'm Mary. Oh, How you're are Mary. You? How are you? Dr. Chris, I'm fine. I Thank you. you. Welcome to Beijing. Welcome to the International Centre for Veterinary Services. In China, up until about 20 years ago, their vets really only focused on farm animals. Looking after dogs and cats and pets in general is only a recent thing. All right, we'll do a quick tour through the hospital and then we'll get you set up into the examination room where you're going to be working out of. Okay, great. Okay. We only have about 300 hospitals and clinics for domestic pets in Beijing. So this is still a very new industry. So when we have the opportunity to have a veterinarian like Dr. Chris come to China and work with us on our cases, um, our doctors learn so much. Uh, ni hao. Good morning. Uh, ni hao, ni hao. But Chris is starting with an unexpected challenge. Who's this? This is Big Beauty. Strange question. Is she a hamster? Yeah. I don't treat hamsters. I've never treated hamsters. In Australia, you're not allowed to have hamsters. So much for Mary's theory. She was a bit shy. I think she was surprised to hear that I'd never seen one like her before. Uh -huh. Look at you. She's beautiful. She's great. But what isn't so beautiful is this lump here. Yeah, she's got difficulties in walking and sometimes seems very tired. Did it appear very quickly? Oh, oh a big bite. Oh, that's no good. I'd be lying if I said I didn't find Big Beauty's name slightly ironic, but it turns out there may be a true meaning behind the term Big Beauty. It refers to the teeth. Oh, you're really getting to that finger, aren't you? <laughs> she's uh, a very playful hamster and she doesn't bite usually, and she's uh, just playing, I think. With that lump? Yes. It is quite well separated from the rest of her body. It's not like it's invading in. And you can see I'm holding onto the lump there. One of the first things I check is how firmly attached it is to the body. This gives you an idea about how much that lump is invading into the tissue surrounding it. Is it cancerous? Yeah, I'm not too sure yet. We'll have to um, work out exactly what sort of cell is in that lump yeah. and what's caused it. Because in hamsters, in the same way as in mice, they can often get little breast cancers. Breast cancers? Yeah. yeah. I'm really very anxious. Big Beauty is my son's um, hamster. He's now back in Australia to study English, so he asked me to look after the hamster. My son is going to be very sad, and my wife is going to be very sad too. What we're going to do, if you could hold Big Beauty like that, yes, I'm going to get that lump between my fingers and put a needle into it. Yes. And the cells I pull out of that lump will tell me exactly what, what we are is. facing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, interesting. Oh. Look at this. I can't believe what I'm seeing in that syringe. You know, I did not expect that. Liquid? Yeah. At the Bondi Referral on, Hospital Sash, two special boys are coming in for a visit. Come on, come on. Their doting mum is emergency come vet Dr. Lisa Chimes. Hello, boys. Hello. Hello, Lisa. How are you? Hello, boys. Hello, boys. The boys are back. The boys are back. <laughs> My dogs Nelson and Lucas are frequent visitors here at Sash, but today I've brought Nelson in for a very different reason. What did you bring him in for? Oh. Nelson has got a lump oh, no. on his bottom. Oh, that's no good. Yeah, it's been oh, there yes. for a little while and yeah. now it looks like it's infected. Oh, that's so, no good. And it's become bigger. Lisa wants specialist surgeon Dr. Steve Fernside to take a look at the worrying lump. Hey. You know I'm a Hello, bit of a neurotic Nels. mother. You are a neurotic <sighs> mother, so we have to deal with those. Hey. There you go, Nels. All right. So it's just here. Okay, let's have a look at you, mate. Oh, that's nasty, Nels, isn't it? 
I'm worried about this lump. I've tested it before and it didn't show any problems, but now it's changed. It's infected, it feels different, and that concerns me because cancerous lesions change. I just hope that this isn't one. So there it is there. It's reasonably firm and it's got just an ulcerated surface there. It feels like it extends quite yeah, deep. Yeah, it does. So... Yeah, look, it's a nasty lump and it's reactive, it's infected and it's painful. So for those reasons, we want to get it out as soon as possible. So have you got room in your schedule yeah, today? I think so. So okay. yeah, let's get it in today. I, and I would rather get it done, get over it, and done with. Otherwise, the longer out. I leave it, the more I'm going to worry. More traumatic for mother. Exactly. Even though I'm a vet and I keep telling myself that it's probably going to be something completely benign and the surgery will fix it, the owner in me is anxious. What a good boy you are. Nelson means so much to me. He's my whole world, and I don't want anything to happen to him. So we'll analyse that. Oh, OK. I'm going to get more out, though. In Beijing, Chris is treating a tiny hamster called Big Beauty, which has an alarming lump on its chest. If you hold it there, that's great. Hightower is looking after the hamster for his young son and is extremely worried about the much-loved pet. It might be cancer. Um, I don't know. That lump has fluid in the middle of it. Yep. And the fluid is that colour. Yep. So we need to check that fluid now to find out exactly what it is. What it is. 95% of these lumps, when you put a needle in and draw back, not much comes out. You almost never get fluid like this. So we'll put it back into a little cage there. Yeah. We'll I'll check that. the sample. OK, great. OK, and let Thank you know you. what we have. Thank you. All right. My son loves this hamster, and my worst fear is that she might die under my care. So, the moment of truth, there's not a lot on this slide, but what is there is going to be very important. If it is cancer, then clearly, you know, the prognosis, it isn't great. And the only chance of giving Big Beauty any sort of future would be surgery. But for an animal so small and so fragile, that surgery has huge risks. If it was cancer, I'd say big clumps of ugly cells that are multiplying here. It's not what's there. It's good news. OK, hi, Tim. Okay. No matter whether you're in Beijing or Bondi, telling someone the good news about their pet never gets old. So on that slide, all I could see was fluid. Wonderful. Now that means that there's not a nasty cancer that's producing that lump. Okay. It's good news. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yes. So can I can I Skype my son and yeah, you let can, him you know? Can tell him for sure. Yeah. Yes. You'll be very happy. From nowhere, Hightower decides it's time to Skype his son Oliver back in Australia. This is news that clearly has to be shared. Oliver, there's someone here that wants to say hi. So the good news is that Big Beauty does not have a tumour. It's one of those really special moments for me where that love for a pet translates and transcends all cultures, all languages and all situations. Because the look on his face is priceless. There we go. She can, she's giving you a little kiss. <laughs> See you later. OK, bye-bye. <laughs> There you go, huh? No, oh, he's, he's happy. Yeah. Was he quite emotional? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Very excited to, to learn the good news about yeah. your beauty. Oh, good, yeah. good. Yeah. So this has been my first case as a vet in Beijing. It's been my first hamster, but it's been a great outcome. Hightower will need to come back to the clinic once a month to have Big Beauty's cyst drained. Well... Thank you very much indeed. That's my Thank absolute you. pleasure. Thank you. Yes. Great to meet you. We're going home now. Big beauty. OK. Come on, bye. Hi. Hi. We're here. Hello. Come on, Nels. He doesn't want to come in. <laughs> it's OK, baby. Good boy. 
It's okay, baby. Oh, good boy. Mummy's gonna hold you for this part, okay? At Sash, Lisa's much-loved dog Nelson has to undergo surgery to have a lump removed from his bottom. I'll just do a little shave. Nelson's had a pretty clean bill of health for the last 10 years, and this is really the first thing that he's had go wrong. So I just hope that this lump isn't cancerous. It's just not something that I want to deal with. You're going to be so brave. You're going to be so brave, huh, Mummy? Nelson's our first child. My husband and I have had him since he was a puppy. He's been through so much with us. Oh. He's been by my side no matter what. You'll be all right, Liz. You're a good boy. You'll be OK. Mummy's very upset. And she loves you. He'll be all right. He'll be fine. He is 10, though. He's getting older. And now reality is starting to set in that he's not going to be around forever. You used to come to vet school with me, didn't you, Nels? Yes. used to sit in the lecture theatre. I used to practise everything on you. Lisa is trying to put on a brave front, but it all suddenly becomes too much. It's OK, Nels. See you in one second. I'll come back in. I just don't want to watch this part. Cool. As an emergency vet, I see so many sick animals and I perform so many procedures on them. But when it's my own dog, I just can't handle it. Good boy. Dr. Tris? Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, right. but we have a client from Australia who specifically yeah. wanted to see you today. <laughs> oh, all he's, right. he's waiting in your examination room. OK, all right. In China, Chris's next patient is an expat Aussie, now living and working in Beijing. How you going? I'm Chris. Hi, Eddie. Eddie, nice to meet you. Likewise. Who's this? This is BG. She's a bit of a big girl, but we like to remind ourselves she's still our baby. The much-loved Bull Mastiff is having a tough time settling in to her new life in Beijing. Now, you look pretty healthy. <laughs> you taste pretty healthy too. <laughs> what, what's she in for today? Um, well, we're after, actually after some advice. Yeah. Um, a lot of people look at her really strange, thinking that she's a dangerous dog, but you know, it's hard to convince them that she's not. And uh, we take her for a walk, and we, uh, we see people coming in the opposite direction, and they paws and they move around her, they give her a wide berth, which is sad because she is, she's such a happy dog that she all she wants to do is say hello and they don't sense that. Sure. So people find that face menacing. <laughs> Obviously this is hard for Eddie to watch because he's confused as to why no one else seems to understand that this dog is of no threat whatsoever. Quite often her tail will duck under, mm. um, you know, because I think she senses the fear and, yeah. and that's just something that sort of spooks her a bit as well. So What I need to work out is, is it people causing this problem or is it actually BG? The only way to know for sure is for us all to go for a walk. Come on, Edge, come on. The lady doesn't want the dog anywhere near yeah. her. So, you know, it's not as if she's running loose and um, barking wildly or anything like that. It doesn't take very long to truly understand exactly what Eddie and BG are going through. You know, they branded all large dogs dangerous and yeah. all she wants to do is just say hello. <laughs> People noticeably change their course, they look away, they veer away, they just do not want to be around. What is a very friendly dog? That's a fairly big reaction going inside though. It makes me feel more comfortable knowing that it's not just me that, that sees this reaction, that it is, you know, that Chris has seen it for himself that people will uh, move out of the way. I'm sure the biggest concern for Eddie is the fact that what is just a simple walk could result in him being reported and BG being labelled as being a dangerous dog then your authorities, if they get involved, the outcome may not be nice. BG, yeah. One brave local does venture in for a tentative pat. No, look, this... But he's still intimidated by BG's size. You eat that, you eat that. Okay. Yeah. I actually have an idea. OK. I think I have something that can change how people perceive her. OK. I'm, in, I'm intrigued to know it. Yeah? Yep. Can I borrow her for a few minutes? Sure, no problem. Stay here. Yep, I'm not going anywhere. I'll just be a little while. Okay. 
I, I'm not too sure what's going to happen with Christmas Plain. You know, there's a lot of people here to convince and uh, we can only hope that it works and uh, that the message gets through. Leave the boxes here. We'll jump in and get our traps. At the Australian Reptile Park, General Manager Tim Faulkner and Keeper Nick have to round up three special volunteers. Tasmanian devils are suffering from a disease called devil facial tumour disease, and it's sending them to extinction. We've got someone. Today, my job is to catch three young Tasmanian devils and take them down to Sydney University for some groundbreaking research. Hello, mate. OK, one, two, three. There we go. Got him? Yep. One devil from one trap. That's a good start. Now I need to check the rest. So far, over 85% of the devil population has been lost to the cancer. It's a desperate race to find a cure. Door shut. Someone's home. Got a devil? Definitely. Yeah, well, let's have a look. Hello, mate. I'm really excited today because research is something that I don't normally do. One, two, three. So to see how it happens and see the scientists working at trying to establish answers and causes and maybe ways that we can save the devil, vaccines or a cure, that's got to be a good thing. I was worried last night that we wouldn't get anyone. We're two out of two. Fingers crossed, we get number three. I reckon we're a fair chance. Ah, uh, it was too good to be true. Uh, we're empty. Trap number three. The bait's been removed, but the door hasn't gone down. False alarm. Next trap. Door shut. Beautiful. And we have a devil. That's the three devils we need. Now we need to box them and get them to Sydney. Right, one, two, three. Now it's time for the serious business. Down to Sydney, they're going to be anaesthetised, have bloods taken, get CAT scans to have a look at some of the internal organs, and it's not something that I've ever seen before. Stay here. Yep, I'm not going anywhere. I'll just be a little while. OK. In Beijing, Chris is working on a solution to stop the locals from being scared of Eddie's big Aussie dog, BG. I'm not entirely sure this is going to work, but it is worth a shot. Has anyone seen my dog? <laughs> What's going on? So we can't put a little sign around us saying she's friendly, but we can make her look like the most <laughs> idolised, most loved animal wow. in China. You know some warm in that? The canine panda. Look at you, amazing. And you know what? People are already smiling. People are already intrigued. How did you find a panda so big enough for us? Yeah, it wasn't easy. <laughs> Pandas are really revered in China. They're almost considered to be sacred. So by making BG just look a little bit like a panda, all of a sudden there's a real curiosity, a fascination, and an affection, naturally. That's amazing. They're all coming to us rather than us having to go to them. They're just intrigued by this <laughs> panda. <laughs> totally out of the blue. I didn't think what Dr. Chris was going to come up with, and I think she looks really comfortable in that outfit too. Look at that. I think she's happy because just, you know, everybody wants to give her a pat on the head again. And that shows you that all of a sudden she's feeling like she has the love back. Yeah. And that's all we can ask for. Exactly. So <laughs> you don't have to stick with the panda outfit. <laughs> we'll just uh, trial and error and see. Maybe we'll change it up from a panda to something different the next day. I'm going to leave you with your fans. Thanks. And the newfound popularity. Thank you so much. Lovely to meet you. Chris, likewise. Thanks All so best, much. Okay. Thank you so much. Take From care. BJ and the family, thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Beautiful shop. See you later. Take care. Bye. Say bye. Bye-bye. Hey. Hi. How are you going? Good. You all right? I think he's under, so... We're we... ready to go? We'll go in. Let's have a look. 
At SASH, Lisa's beloved Nelson is having surgery to remove a potentially cancerous lump. So we're going to make an incision around here, Lise. It's yeah. going to go right around the outside and then uh, remove it from there. Specialist surgeon Dr Steve Fernside will be performing the operation under Lisa's watchful eye. There's always pressure in these situations. Very connected with me. Whether you're, whether you're uh, operating on the Queen's dog or whether you're operating on Lisa's dog. Doesn't matter. It's always pressure. I don't envy Steve's position in this because I'm not only a vet, I'm a high maintenance mother and I'm watching his every move. So I'm just going to size around it. It does sort of go below the surface of the skin, this, doesn't it? Mm, it's definitely deeper than any lump he's yeah. Any operation has its own risks, and Nelson's not a young dog anymore, so Lisa's very concerned about him, and whenever we anaesthetise older animals, we always have concerns. Um, but he's an otherwise healthy dog, and this mass needs to be removed. I just want to make sure that I get around the outside of this thing reasonably well. Even though I find it really difficult seeing Nelson under anaesthetic, I have comfort in the fact that we're doing the right thing. We have to get this lump out because if it is something cancerous, I need to know. So we're just on the final little stretch now, we're just going around the bottom of it. You can feel it's sort of like a firm, like a marble in there. It's quite, quite hard. Mm. So we're going to submit that to the lab. Now... I've got to close this to make Mum happy. Here we go. Job done, Lise. <sighs> Great. It is a big relief that the surgery's gone well and we can wake Nelson up from the anaesthetic, but my worries are definitely not over. It's going to be a really tough few days waiting for these pathology results. I just hope that it doesn't come back as something cancerous. Oh, you're a bit of a mess. Hey, I miss you. Mummy's right here. Hello, are you here to see me? Yes. Or oh, Chris? Yes. yes. I, nice to meet you. Nice I'm to Henry. meet you. Hey, Henry. My wife, Iris. Hello, Ni Hao Ma. Ni Hao. <laughs> now, what have you got here? In Beijing, Another unusual patient has just been brought in to see Chris. So come through here. Thank you. Iris and Henry keep some unconventional pets and they want Chris to take a look at one of the boys. Snails. snails. Yeah, there are eight of them. The only snails I've ever seen in Bondi have been in people's gardens. I've never seen a pet snail before. Now what is wrong with the snail? You can see his chair get a crack on it and dry it. We don't know what's the problem. Yeah. Okay, all oh, right. You see it? Yeah. This, this side is okay, but the crack is here. Yeah, that's a problem. I mean, you can see that the shell is not growing properly. No. And in those holes, it's kind of produced what is like scar tissue for snails. We worry because uh, we saw the crack is getting bigger and bigger, and the color, I mean, is pretty different than the other side. I wouldn't mind seeing how the other ones are going. This. Hope you can help them, you know. This one actually has cracking as well, see? Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. yeah. What do they eat? Do they eat the lettuce? Yeah, yes. it seems they only like lettuce. Anything else? We were told that they also eat the sand, to help them digest, you know, the food, mm. yeah. These guys are missing something in their food. The clue is in the fact that the shell is where the problem is. Okay, now we see. And what they're missing is causing this problem. And this, this is everything they love, but it doesn't have absolutely everything they need. We were told that only they like they, that us only. So, yeah, we was were surprised to hear that. What they're missing is calcium. Okay, true that. There's almost no calcium in this lettuce. We need it. Dogs need it. Cats need it. And it turns out, snails need it too. So, do you know any food that has calcium and can fit them? Any idea? Well, it's going to be hard to find a food that has a lot of calcium that they still want to eat. But I need to make sure 
that I can actually get that something for you guys. One second. Excuse me. I'm, I'm looking for um, a. Uh... I know what I need in order to make sure that Lushan's shell is fixed. But will these guys have it? I just don't know. Australian Reptile Park General Manager Tim Faulkner is taking three very special Tasmanian devils to Sydney University for an important study. Today's research is looking into the devil's disease, devil facial tumour disease. The species is facing extinction and any clues or insights as to what might be causing this disease or how we can prevent it or cure it, that's what we want to be involved in. Tim is meeting Professor Kathy Balov, who's running the innovative devil tumour study. G'day, Cathy. Hey, Tim. How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm good. So Tim's brought these devils in from the Australian Reptile Park um, because they're going to be part of a long-term study with us. What we've noticed is that young devils don't tend to catch devil facial tumour disease. Look at that. We've got a little boy. So we'll pop him in the sack. One, two, three. What's going to happen today is the devils will receive an anaesthetic that'll put them to sleep. Then they'll quickly take blood, but the main reason we're here is to put them through a CAT scan machine, to have a CT. Okay, so there's the head. Now it's time to anaesthetise him. And the best and calmest way to do that is to leave him inside the bag, get his nose into a corner, and present the mask. And he feels like he's going floppy now. The CT scan will give the researchers an in-depth look at a healthy young Tassie devil and in particular, an important organ in the chest called the thymus. Now the thymus in young mammals produces everything you need for a healthy immune system. But the thymus dies at about the age of two. Interestingly, young devils under the age of two seem not to get the disease. Okay, so we're good there. If they can find out why and figure out what the thymus is doing, marry that up with the bloods and understand what's in the blood and what's being produced by the thymus, we could come up with some answers. We should be now coming into the shoulders. And most interesting is now we're going to be very close to where we are expecting to see the thymus. Tim is excited but anxious. For the first time, he might be about to get some vital clues about the deadly tumour that's killing so many devils. So that's what a devil looks like yeah. through a CT scan. Yeah. Look at that. Do you know cuttlefish? <laughs> like squid? Yeah, yeah. Do you know um, they have a little bone inside them? In Beijing, Chris is trying to track down an unusual remedy for some pet snails, which have badly cracked shells. So not like a live squid or like a piece of squid, but the, the... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we have that here. Perfect. Yeah, I'll find it for you. Thank you. Okay. I get the impression this is a strange day for you guys. Trust me, I feel the same way. Excuse me. Now what do you want? Perfect. Much to my surprise, this clinic has exactly what I need, a cuttlefish bone. So it turns out we can fix these snails' problems right now. You brought me snails. Now I'm going to bring you presents. Wow. What they need is this. Have you seen one of these before? No. So Lushan will eventually slide across that and will dissolve that calcium and will basically give himself a calcium supplement. You just break a little bit off. No. In there. Lettuce as well. We're getting close to that being a complete meal. OK. Xie <laughs> Xie. Thank you very much for okay. all your help. Yeah. The more time I spend here, the more I realise China is clearly full of surprises. Who knows what's next? So basically, this is the head, this is the heart, and then the thymus should be located here. At Sydney University, three Tassie devils are undergoing CT scans for an important research project. 
This study is critical because devils are threatened with extinction because of a contagious cancer. And we need to understand how their immune system works to be able to develop a vaccine, or at least to understand why devils don't mount an immune response against it. We are just there. And this is the thymus. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad you found one. We're all and now very we excited. can watch it over yes. time. Look at that. We're wondering whether these young animals are somehow protected from devil facial tumour disease by the immune system. And that's why we're trying to understand um, how the immune system works, particularly in young animals, and then how it changes as the animals age. Hello, mate. This one's awake now, and that's very comforting because to see him asleep there on the table, well, it's rather confronting and not something I'm used to, but he's waking up, he's having a sniff, and he looks great. Two more young devils will now be scanned for a close-up look at the thymus. OK. This is a little girl. Hello, darling. You're very important at the moment. That's good. The second devil's in now, and it's a little female, and I feel a lot more comfortable now. The boy went through, it was successful, everyone was a bit tense, but now, after seeing the thymus and seeing some results, it really makes it worthwhile. OK, we have the thymus there. That's two down, one to go. One, two, three. Here we go, number three. These studies are critically important because we need to understand why their immune system doesn't fight back, but also to ultimately develop vaccines down the track. OK, do we have a thymus? Let's see. I think that's the first view there. And that's the area that we are interested in. Well, that is phenomenal. But is that number three waking up? I think so. So okay, we better go good. there. It's a promising start for Tim and the research team. Today seems like a great success. Everyone is buzzing. And who knows what we just might find with the results. Yeah. All right. There you go, little one. Thank you. She's up. Well, that's it. I'm really happy. I'm happy to see you guys happy. And I'm looking forward to seeing these three back every two months yeah. for the next year or Yeah, well, I'll come on down again, and, and who knows what we might find. Ah, ni hao ma. Ni hao. <laughs> How are you? Good. I'm Joseph. Hey, Joseph. Chris. Oh, I'm here we're... to help you for the day. In China, Chris's volunteering adventure continues, this time at one of the country's most important conservation centres. We will come everyone from all over the world to come here to be the volunteer. Yeah, especially the bait. What's our first job? So now we'll go to the panda kitchen to prepare the food. It's breakfast time for the pandas, and Chris will be helping to prepare a specially formulated meal. The thing about pandas is they find it very hard to get all the energy they need each day with just bamboo, so you need to supplement it with extra things like panda cake, which is a higher level of carbohydrate, fat and protein. That way they can actually keep their, their weight on. Otherwise, they really struggle in captivity to actually keep all the energy they need. OK, so ready? ready? Let's do it. Yep. So is this their favourite part of the day? Mm, yeah. yeah. Yes. The favourite time for the favourite food? Yes. Chris will hand feed two of the younger pandas, Shishi and Bayan. Oh, hello. You want cake? Look at you, you can't wait for cake. You're even willing to do squats for cake. <laughs> Panda squats. All right. Yeah. You're going to be very, very gentle here. It's a small piece. There we go. You like that, don't you? The serious threats that pandas have to their survival means they have to be housed in a place like this, where their numbers can be built up. Sure, I'd love it if those bars weren't there and if the whole area was a lot bigger and a lot greener, but the reality is that in terms of panda conservation, it is still very early days. You stay healthy. You have to mix it up. Thank you. Good. A bit of a palate cleanser too. I have to keep on reminding myself that she is so strong that she wanted to she could actually grab my hand and break it. That's why I'm trying to keep my distance back, but it's very hard. The giant panda is the national treasure of China. So in the wild, the wild panda is very, very rare. The number of the wild panda is decreasing year after year. 
So now more and more Chinese people, they got the awareness to protect the panda. This is one of those very surreal moments where you can't truly believe you're kneeling in front of a panda eating cake. But she seems very happy about the arrangement. Yep. Good, good girl, thank you. Okay, this is, yeah. this is awkward because yeah. that's enough cake for you. So I have to give the rest of the cake to someone else. I'm sorry, there'll be more cake another time. It's gonna be all right, no, I'm, I'm... Oh, this is, this is tough. You can't eat too much, you know, okay? I feel awful. Next in line for a meal is Bayan, Shishi's boyfriend. Would you like some cake? There we go, very good. It's hoped that one day Shishi and Bayan will successfully mate. They are just metres apart, and you'd think when you have a species that is so desperate to build up its numbers, they'd be breeding all the time. But, oh no, that's not how it works. You see, a female panda is only receptive to mating for about 36 hours a year. So Bayan has to really seize his moment. OK, finish the feeding. All right. See you, Bayan. Good luck with the um, missus next door, huh? So yeah. we're finished with the morning's work. So next, we'll go to the kindergarten. We're going to a panda kindergarten? Yes, panda kindergarten. That yeah. sounds extraordinary. This way. This way? Yeah. It looks like <laughs> there should be human babies in here, but no, this is for pandas. It literally is a kindergarten. <laughs> in here now? This is the inner sanctum of the panda breeding centre. To be allowed entry is an extremely rare privilege. So this is a panda nursery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Food is coming. Food is coming, guys. It's OK. Hola. Come on. Follow me. Hey. Here. Food, 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 food. Ironically, for me to be invited to go to kindergarten is almost like I've graduated. So I've now reached the peak. If I'm trusted with the babies, I'm trusted with anything. I never thought I'd be this close to a panda and be able to reach out and touch him and listen to him slurping his milk. It's about as good as it gets, really. <laughs> this is gone, isn't it? Hello. Hi. Hi. For me, I'm in absolute disbelief that this moment is even happening. It's kind of, for a vet, like a dream come true. Do you want to come in there this? Hello. Is that good? <laughs> I've never been this happy to sit in front of someone with their mouth open while they eat. But you're an exception. Look at you. Yeah? Yeah. So everything down to the last detail is so tightly managed here. And it's a credit to what they do. They, they just know these pandas so incredibly well because it's their national symbol. <laughs> Have you ever seen something <laughs> as adorable as that? <laughs> Why do you love working with pandas so much? All the workers who work for the panda, we want to protect the panda from extinction, yeah. Mm. yeah. So the work you do, you know it's very important? Yes, important and uh, meaningful. Mm. Yeah. Somehow today I've managed to feed and be involved in this nurturing process for these baby pandas. It is something I'll never forget. But now, I'm heading back to Bondi. Come on! Yeah, good job, guys. Come on, let's go. In Bondi, it's been an anxious two days for Lisa. She's been waiting for the test results on the lump removed from little Nelson. Nelson, Lucas, come on. Good boy. Hey. Waiting over the last few days has been really difficult and I think being a vet has made it even harder. I know how serious some illnesses can be and I was hoping that Nelson would be OK. Three days ago, Lisa was in tears as she watched her beloved pet undergo surgery to remove a potentially cancerous lesion. You'll be all right, Lisa. Now, the results are in. 
It's really great news. That lump was benign. It was just an infected cyst, no sign of cancer, and I am over the moon. It's all good, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. It is. You're all good. You're a healthy boy. Hey? Nelson's my first baby, and I was terrified that he was going to be diagnosed with cancer. And now, a huge sense of relief that me and my boy will be playing for many more years to come. Hey, no cancer. No cancer, my love. Hey, such good news. Such good news. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.